like he's not a typical superhero. Like he doesn't wear tights. He just sort of goes around in like a suit and like bare feet and kind of does his own thing. He's like a bit of a bum. He's like homeless <laughs> like, and like cost his version of Hawksmore. He like he gets clothes from his his like hobo friend that steals them off drunks in the park and like gives them to Jack. That has nothing to do with it. <laughs> 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 uh, let's <laughs> um, But yeah, I was, I was drawn to the idea of doing a superhero story, um, not just because it was like higher profile than anything I'd done before, which is mostly independent stuff, um, but because I thought it'd be really interesting to do an action story. There's like tons of action in Hogsmore, and that was something that I really wanted to work on at the time. Um, and it was a different sort of genre, like a different feel to the story. Um, it was a superhero story, but it was also um, sort of a crime story. There were sci-fi elements, and Mike Costa gave the whole thing a really noir feel. Um, yeah, so to answer the question, uh, I guess stuff that appeals to me about superhero stuff is um, the action, the fast pace, but um, above everything else, I'm just drawn to like a well-written story and a well-rounded character, and that comes down more to the writer than to who the character is. Because um, different writers have different versions of all these famous characters, obviously. So, um, for me, if the genre isn't as important as the um, as the writer of the story, I guess. Um, going backwards again with you, Matt. Well, just a moment. Can I take a moment? Uh, I'll hear that. Okay. Normally, uh, at a panel called DC Nation at a convention, there would be Dan DiDio or Ian Sattler that would be here and they would make some important announcements, right? Uh, they're not here, uh, so I'm going to make some important announcements. Uh, the difference is that uh, these are announcements that I just made up. Dad does too! So, uh, Grant Morrison is writing an as yet untitled sequel to uh, Final Crisis. This one, however, it won't be a standard format comic. Uh, instead, it's going to be engraved on a four-dimensional hypersphere. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be shot into the black hole at the center of the galaxy, <laughs> at which time it will explode backward in time and imprint its contents on the collective unconscience of all sentient beings. <laughs> um, so yeah, just a couple out of them. In a bold move to increase sales, DC is now having Jeff Johns write all of the comics. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the way they're doing this though is kind of interesting. The, he's uh, elected to have his brain removed and placed in a jar, which is then wired to an IBM selected typewriter. Uh, and then I guess they just like feed the paper in. <laughs> I don't really know how it works. Uh, just, you know, that I was given. And then uh, there's one more there's one here. Uh, that one's not funny. Uh, <laughs> Uh, th no, the, the one I had was like, one woman dies and gets reincarnated as a marmoset. No, no, no. <laughs> um, but the last one, uh, the co-publisher arrangement between uh, Dan DiDio and Jim Lee is actually only uh, temporary. Uh, at this year's San Diego Comic Con, they're going to uh, uh, come together in a uh, Thunderdome-style death match. <laughs> and uh, the one who survives gets to be uh, publisher and editor-in-chief. And then I guess after that, uh, the winner fights Joe Sly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my, uh, my announcements. Yeah. 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 You're waiting for the imprint of my uh, collective consciousness. Uh, yeah, well, you know, just wait for it. <laughs> but when it happens, you will have remembered it all your life, so you won't notice that it's happening. <laughs> just want to clarify. It'll be much more well received. <laughs> Will that help us understand Final Fantasy? <laughs> That's going to 
bring you down. Yeah. <laughs> um, but w w what about Blue Beetle? I mean, do you like? I mean, I mean, to, to, to me, Jamie Reyes is, is a really exciting. Hi. 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 Uh, but uh, with the Jaime Reyes uh, is a really intriguing character. He's a really diverse um, uh, cast of characters in his life who, who I think were very well um, developed. Um, I, I had some friends that, that really called him DC Spider-Man with his quick wit and uh, just the way he interacted with his friends and family and that type of thing like that. What about Jaime did you like? Well, first of all, uh, I was really so stoked when I got the book because when uh, when I, I got called to be offered the book, it was my current favorite DC title. So um, I was like really, really stoked. And I love what John Martha was doing, and I love Raphael's art. And so it was just like totally kick ass. And my my only concern was, you know, was I going to be able to like kind of keep up the, the quality of the book? But I really, Jaime is such a great character because unlike so many of these other characters, he's like this really nice, well-adjusted kid. You know, he didn't have any like huge tragedy that turned, you know, turned him into a superhero, and you know, he just happened to find the wrong scarab in the wrong parking lot, and, <laughs> and, um, and he has really great friends who take care of him and look after him, and they all hang out and joke together, and they've been friends since they were little kids, so they get to rag on each other, and um, you know, that book was just a joy to write. I can't even tell you, I was so sad to not get to do it anymore. <coughs> um, Talk about the final crisis. Um, <laughs> I, I actually, uh, I, I, I guess I'm that guy that uh, really enjoyed uh, final, the final crisis aftermath run. Um, um, the one, one of my favorite scenes is, is I think it was an issue two when, when he uh, goes back home to his wife and kids and he ends up uh, stealing his kid. He steals his wife's car. He had patches that has his wife's. Um, his kid's bike, yeah, his kid's, the kid's, kid's bike on the back, um, and, and and you do those types of things a lot in, in the, the sixth sense of humor things a lot in, in Jack of Fables as well. Um, it, 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 is that something that that is more of a part of you, or is that something that that you look at as a part of the characters that you're writing? Well, the funny thing is, I was I was writing Blue Beetle and uh, Run at the same time. And so, like, I would be writing a page where, uh, and then Mike Miller punches out a nurse, you know, and, and knocks over a kid with cancer and throws a corgi out a window. And then, like, uh, I'm in for a hug. <laughs> so, uh, it, was, it was definitely, uh, but, you know, to me, I, I love doing, I have a very broad spectrum of interests. Um, and I, I like writing, you know, really vicious humor. And I like writing things that are sweet and, and kind. And to me, it's just all the same. It's just telling you this. Um, as far uh, uh, Amy, as far as Madam Madam Zandu is concerned, you, you know you, you're you're you're, wrap, you're wrapping that up. Um, and I mean, one one of the, one of the things that, that that you and I have talked about before is it, 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 it is 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 a creative creative team. Uh, what 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 has made that creative team? I mean, produce. A book that I mean, from the, you know, the last two years, you know, you know, different, you know, different artists, but uh, you, you know, same writer, same, you know, same members of the other portions of the team. What has made that book so um, uh, you know, keep the cohesive team together to produce such high quality stories? Okay, um, let's see. I well, I, just based off of because it changes artists and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. You know, I.